Now, the human life cycle determines that the essential lessons that we have to learn are on the physical plane. Sure, it's far easier to get an understanding, an overview of life once you have passed on, but as I said right at the beginning, I don't have the time to go into every single aspect of life, and I'm talking about life after death, because that is an, another subject that could be gone into at another date. The lessons we have to learn are here and now. We may be living in the 21st century, but we're still on this journey. When people talk about the spiritual path, they think it's uh, something that students in India or Tibet did hundreds of years ago under the guidance of a personal guru. And after years of hardship and sacrifice, they would finally gain this elusive state, enlightenment. And yes, there are examples, and there's a very famous example, which is a uh, Milarepa. It's a very famous story, and it's publicized. I've read it, and I'm sure many of you have as well. But such thoughts are not prevalent in modern day life. People have so much to deal with just in the working week, coping with the stresses of modern life, and the last thing on people's minds is even more discipline. And when people aren't working, what do they do? They look for leisure activities, sports, holidays, relaxation, parties, and all the things that we all like doing. But that is a fact of life today. And yet the spiritual path and its disciplines are no less important today than they were hundreds of years ago. If you compare the lives of people in those days and our lives today, they had a different set of experiences. They often had a life of hardship where they were just struggling to survive. But the law of karma has not changed just because we have a fast car instead of a horse and cart or we've exchanged the handwritten scrolls for a Google on your laptop. Our lives today are more complex. We've moved away from simplicity. We have more material knowledge and less religious or spiritual faith. It's an interesting change that's taken place. And in the past, people had more faith, but they had less knowledge. And you see, today we live in the age of the information technology, and actually that is working against our spiritual evolution. Yes, we, we can tap into a lot of things. We've got the internet, so we've got a lot of things that help our comfort, but it hasn't actually helped our spiritual evolution. We allow ourselves to become far too easily distracted, and we've become more eclectic in our tastes, for instance. People might say, well, let's try a little bit of meditation. You know, that's nice. And Tai Chi makes you feel good. And Hatha Yoga's now become a keep fit regime. And we try a bit of this and a bit of that. And it really is not the way to go if you are serious about the spiritual path. But we do have a great opportunity to turn this around and use our access to this information to our advantage because there's actually much more available in spiritual teachings than ever there was hundreds of years ago. Because what is available today was not available to those people who would have only had access to such knowledge by initiation only, as I said to you. So here we are on this journey back to the source, and despite the difference in lifestyle to our ancestors, we still have to learn the necessary lessons if we're going to go forward and break away from this never-ending cycle of life, death, and reincarnation. I think that the, people, the whole process of life has become stagnated. We just keep on doing the same things over and over again. We're just treading water, and we're not really getting very far. So this is where the understanding of life is so important. There is a reason for everything. We do have a destiny, and we can change it. 
nothing is set in stone. If we were not able to change our destiny, then we'd never be able to evolve, would we? First of all, we have to understand just what we are. We are not our body. We are not our ego. We have to look upon ourselves as divine beings traveling on this journey through experience, which is entirely of our own making. Whatever path that we have set out for ourselves is something that we have created through the pattern that we have created through past deeds, past thoughts. We have to have a complete shift of consciousness, a complete change of outlook, and that realization will bring us to a karmic crossroads. And when we realize that, we'll understand that we're no longer the victims of fate, if you like, but the masters of it. Let's turn it into something really positive. You see, karma is not fate or destiny. It's the divine law of cause and effect working out in our lives through our past thoughts and actions. But how karma works out can very much depend on our state of consciousness. And this is a very important point. Our life, as I said, is determined by a pattern that we have set from the past. Yes, we can change our destiny, but there are certain elements that we will have to go through in order to learn. For example, the circumstances of our birth, what race, what country we were born into, whether we are man, woman, how intelligent we are, our health, economic circumstances. These are all factors that are set at birth, if you like, which is setting us on the next phase of our journey. But all these preordained factors are the foundation upon which we have the potential to grow. Whenever we're faced with a situation we don't like, it is our responses to these situations that can determine the karmic outcome. Now that's very important. It's a very important lesson. Because I'm now going to try and look at karma as it applies to our everyday lives. It's easy to talk about global karma. Oh, there's war, and yes, there's suffering, there's this and that. But we have to look at our own lives and how we can change the circumstances in our lives and change our outlook. You can learn a lesson in a lifetime or in a brief moment of deep understanding and realization. So the longer we refuse to acknowledge the law of karma, the longer it takes us to recognize our own lessons and our will to resolve them. And I'm going to relate a little story about a man in India who lived at the time of Mahatma Gandhi. Now, he was caught up in one of these many skirmishes between the Hindus and the Muslims, and he killed a man. I'm not sure which religion he belonged to, but he killed someone of the opposite religion. And he was so filled with remorse, and he didn't know what to do. So he approached Gandhi, and Gandhi gave him the following advice. Adopt a child of the other religion and bring him up as your own. Now that same man could have departed this life with no remorse, with no attempt to make any amends, like so many people today. And a karmic seed would have been sown, which would have come to fruition in a future life. So we have to learn to take responsibility for our own behavior on every level. Otherwise, we will keep treading water and we will not move forward. So by resisting these great universal laws, we will only find conflict. Conflict has to be the opposite of harmony. So we have to learn to cooperate with this law, and then we will be in harmony with nature, and we'll start to find inner peace. That will be the first step. But whatever lessons we have to learn, they will keep coming back 
until we have well and truly learnt them.